Speaker Sir, Honourable Members, it gives me great pleasure to address this County Assembly gathering following the National General Elections that delivered the third County Administration. May I begin by congratulating you, Honourable Members, on your election on the 9th of August 2022. Observing the grueling nature of the long campaign trail, I know your victory was not easy. I further wish to recognize all nominated members of the House of Assembly who got the honor to occupy the few slots available. The August elections and its outcome was the most fair and peaceful election. Independent observations demonstrated that Nakuru County and Kenya in general that in Nakuru County and Kenya in general, we are slowly achieving maturity in our democratic processes and institutions. Let me also take this chance to congratulate you, Honorable Speaker, on your recent election as the third Speaker of the Nakuru County Assembly. As a former member of this House, I'm sure you will quickly adapt into your new mandate. May I also take this early opportunity to thank the President of the Republic of Kenya and our Kenya Kwanza Coalition leader, His Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto, for rewarding Nakuru with a full Cabinet Secretary appointment of Mr. Zak Mwangi Jero, the CS nominee for the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development. I wish to thank you, Honorable Speaker, and the entire County Assembly leadership for affording me this opportunity to once again share my vision for Nakuru County under the auspices of the State of the County Address, pursuant to the provisions of the County Government Act 2022. Mr. Speaker, sir, Honorable Members, I wish to once again acknowledge the overwhelming mandate that we received from the people of Nakuru to steer this county forward. The voice of the people reigns supreme on what direction the county should take in governance and political affairs. Having previously served as the first county speaker and the second senator of Nakuru, I have interacted with leaders and constituents from all over Nakuru. I have observed and understood the challenges our people face, but I have also noted their immense potential in building a shared and prosperous county. I offered myself to lead Nakuru into the next level because I believe in the abundant prospects of Nakuru and its people. Therefore, in the run-up to the general elections, we shared our political manifesto outlining our agenda for Nakuru. I have further ensured alignment of our manifesto with priorities under the Kenya Kwanzaa Administration and the United Democratic Alliance, UDA, on putting our people on their interest first. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, Nakuru County is the third most populous county in Kenya, after Nairobi and Kiambu, with a projected population of 2.3 million. The gross county product by Kenya National Bureau of Statistics for the period of 2013 to 2020 has ranked Nakuru among the top five contributors to the national economy. Further, the GCP 2021 report has found out that the county economy is among the most diversified and therefore more resilient economies. Our population is expected to continue growing fast and increasingly urbanizing. Within a five-year period, we now have a city and three major municipalities. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, I wish to remind you that while we have received positive assessment from external reports, we are emerging from ravages of COVID-19 pandemic and its severe effects to lives and livelihoods. The county economic recovery has been constrained by the negative effects during a prolonged post-pandemic period. Disruptions in global supply chain, weak performing public sector, inflation and the high cost of oil. Our farmers have also recorded poor harvest over the last two seasons. 
as a county government, we have also inherited huge amounts of pending bills. As a result of both internal and external shocks, business has suffered, the cost of living has gone up, and many livelihoods have been lost. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, therefore, our singular aim in the short term to medium term period must, without a doubt, focus on building back and building back better. Irrespective of our political affiliations, we collectively have the unique opportunity of ensuring that the benefits of devolution reach to all the county residents. Allow me, therefore, to outline my strategic priorities for Nakuru in appreciation of the on or on appreciation of the foregoing situation and the functional responsibilities of county government. In the integrated medium term period, that is between 2023 and 2027, I look forward to an inclusive leadership and social economic empowerment for all. To begin with health sector, I envisage quality healthcare for all. Health is one of the fully devolved services and further consume the highest proportion of the county budget. The county is burdened with the challenge of preventable diseases, chronic ailments, and access to affordable healthcare services. The COVID-19 disease and post-pandemic effects expose the soft underbelly in this sector. In order to achieve access to quality and affordable healthcare for all county residents, my administration will focus on priorities based on the main pillars in the health sector. These priorities will address the following gaps. One, reforming health sector policies to address existing gaps in staff recruitment, placement, training, promotion, in terms of employment. Two, promote improving access to healthcare services by organizing patients with chronic illnesses into support groups to streamline access to drugs and services. Establishing dedicated youth-friendly centers and palliative care units in all our sub-county hospitals. Establishing ambulance management system and reforming county community health services. C, in order to promote sustainable financing for healthcare, I shall prioritize governance, transparency, and accountability concerns in the management of hospital facility improvement fund, the FIF. In addition, I shall lead collaborations with the national government to ensure access to NHIF cover. D, in order to ensure the adequate health products and technology, I shall ensure deliberate budget allocation for the procurement of drugs and essential medical supplies. I shall further ensure deployment of a robust ICT system to manage drugs, essential medical supplies, and patients in health facilities. E, to increase further access to healthcare services, my administration shall prioritize completion, equipping, and operationalization of ongoing and stalled health infrastructure projects, upgrading all sub-county hospitals in functional level four status, expansion of the existing dispensaries and health centers to offer a comprehensive and standardized package of care, and expand services offered at Nakuru level five hospital to minimize cases of referral. However, to address health sector leadership and governance constraints, I shall ensure that all hospital boards of management and health facilities management committees are constituted from within local communities served to promote participation and ownership in decision making. Uh, uh, finally, in healthcare, observing the huge burden for healthcare financing, I intend to promote and strengthen partnerships and collaboration with relevant stakeholders in the sector to leverage on opportunities for external resource to bridge current budgetary gaps while also ensuring accountability and transparent utilization of such resources. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, the contribution of the agriculture sector 
to the county economy cannot be overstated. However, the sector has continued to suffer from high cost of farm inputs, declining yields, climate change, and its effects and fluctuations in market prices. My administration has, among other, other, others, prioritized achieving food security and agro processing through the following interventions. One, enhancing access to affordable farm inputs and subsidized services, effective and efficient agricultural extension services to, pro to promote productivity. B, implementing quality control through standardized packaging of local agricultural products and ensuring access to certified seeds and improved livestock weeds. C, promote agribusiness through policy guidance in contract farming to guarantee minimum returns. D, promote diversification, crop and livestock, including pyrethrum and avocados, to reduce vulnerabilities associated with the traditional crops. And E, establishing partnerships to operationalize the Egerton Agri City Park to enhance agro processing. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, Kenya Vision 2030 has identified physical infrastructure as a foundation for national transformation. An effective and efficient physical infrastructure is the hallmark of a competitive economy. In order to facilitate the competitiveness of the county economy and transform Nakuru, my administration intends to focus on the following. A, develop and operationalize a robust integrated county transport infrastructure master plan covering road and transport connectivity. Uh, construct modern Matatu Tamina in the city and all urban areas with supportive infrastructure for SMEs, MSEs, and formulate and implement policy to promote utilization of local content in county infrastructure development and maintenance. Uh, undertake routine maintenance of at least 2,000 kilometers of access roads across the county Identify at least 200 kilometers of road network for upgrading to bitumen standards in collaboration with the national government and development partners. Expand county street lighting program and transition to solar power street lighting. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, given the evolved function of early childhood development and education, the ECDs, the county government has a unique opportunity of guaranteeing a good start and foundation for basic education. My administration is committed, is committed to achieving access to quality and affordable ECDs and vocational training for all. I look forward to achieving this noble goal through executing the following. Implementing a school feeding program in ECDs to improve nutrition and increase enrollment and retention. B. Empl by employing adequate and well-trained ECD teachers to reduce the teacher pupil ratio. C. Undertaking continuous in-service capacity development of ECD teachers and program officers. D. Expanding and equipping ECD classrooms with enhanced digital cap capabilities and providing adequate instructional materials. And E. Collaboration with national education stakeholders to improve transition rates at all levels. On the other hand, my administration will prioritize youth training by focusing on skills development in our vocational training centers. On this agenda, I intend to do the following. Acquire modern, acquire modern equipment and tools for vocational training centers through partnerships with industry players and other external partners. Establishing uh, digital innovation hubs and community libraries at the sub-county level. Progressively establish vocational centers of excellence in each sub-county. 
promote partnerships with universities and industry for incubation and commercialization of youth innovations. To increase retention of our learner in high school and tertiary education, I wish to consolidate county bursary allocations so as to ensure equitable distribution and introduce scholarship programs for the needy students. On these honorable members, I wish to mention that the next disbursement may be delayed due to current reconstitution of bursary committees. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, a good government is recognized based on how well it protects its weakest members of the society. My administration will prioritize provision of social safety nets to reduce the vulnerabilities of our special interest groups, including the elderly, persons with disability, women and youth. And to attain the objective of social protection, I look forward to implementing the following. Formulate, approve and implement a county gender policy. Establish and operationalize gender-based violence, rescue and rehabilitation centers in collaboration with relevant stakeholders. Facilitate faster registration of PWDs and increase efficiency in implementation of county PWD funds. Streamline access to government procurement opportunities, ACPO, to ensure meaningful benefits to the intended target groups and partner with sectoral stakeholders in community social mobilization, sensitization, and access to affordable credit for organized groups. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, as aforementioned in my statement above, the county economy contributes to a significant proportion of the national economy. To promote our competitiveness and in building a more diversified economy, the county government will require to take deliberate steps to reduce the cost of doing business and therefore position Nakuru as an important destination for local and foreign investment. In order to achieve this goal, I look forward to promoting the following. Reform the county government tax regime through harmonization of fees and charges and elimination of other non-tariff barriers to trade. Partner with interested and eligible financial institutions to operationalize the County Enterprise Fund and the Cooperative Fund to facilitate access to affordable capital by MSMEs and SMEs. Leverage on abundant county energy potential to establish proposed industrial park in collaboration with responsible national government departments. Modernize and expand county market infrastructure. Offer policy guidance towards value addition in livestock, fisheries, and agriculture products by the private sector. Mobilize group savings for capital investment through the cooperative movement. Market and promote grant Nakuru. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, as you are aware, Nakuru is ranked as a water scarce county. Our county also lies in ecological sensitive regions with important wetlands. My administration will focus on achieving clean and safe water supply systems and sustainable environmental conservation. To achieve this initiative, I look forward to undertaking the following. Expeditiously follow up with the responsible state department to ensure completion of the flagship Itare water dam. Cooperate, uh, co collaborate with neighboring Baringo County to expand water reticulation with Chamasusu Dam in Rongai and Nakuruwe sub-counties. Mobilize necessary capital to construct Malewa Dam to increase supply of clean and safe water to Naivasha and Gilgi sub-counties. Complete and sustain solarization of county forehold projects. Collaborate with the national government and responsible state departments to allow for sustainable exploitation of forest resources to alleviate current vulnerabilities in our timber industry and related sectors. Coordinate sustainable solid and liquid waste management systems in all urban areas. Promote adaptation, mitigation to climate change, access 
to clean energy sources and transition to green economy options. Preserving the finite nature of land resource, we are called upon to effectively and efficiently utilize this gas resource. Land-based revenue contributes close to half of our own of our county owned source revenue. I'm aware that this house has previously adopted the county special plan, CSP 2014-2024, and the integrated strategic urban development plans for Naku and Naivasha municipality. In the next integrated plan period, my administration will prioritize the following. Digitalize county land records, submission and approval of building plans through proposed land information management system, implement the county special plan to further ensure proper coordination and sustainable land use planning, promote alternative dispute resolution, ADR mechanisms in resolution of land disputes, Develop a county policy and master plan on affordable housing, leveraging on county-owned county -owned land. Develop and implement city, municipalities, regeneration plans. Prioritize proper physical planning for selected towns and urban centers. Engage national government on finalization of county titling program and to resolution of land targets imposed in sections of Doro, Molo, Kuresoi South, sub-counties. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, the young population constitutes the most active and highest proportion of the county labor force. Unfortunately, most of them have remained underemployed. To mainstream youth agenda for Nakuru and create opportunities for our young men and women, I intend to focus on the following. Enhance skills development in our vocational training centers and other training institutions to promote youth employability. Enhance the county youth internship program to provide necessary linkage between academia and need of industrial environment. Formulate and implement a youth policy on short-term youth volunteership programs. Document available county skill sets provide linkage with the job market locally and abroad. Create a sports and arts fund for managing and nurturing county sports, sports talents, arts, culture, and recreation. Fast track the completion of Afraha Stadium, Caring Get Stock Sports Academy, and other existing sports stadia. Invest in ICT infrastructure to leverage on the available opportunities in Ajira, digital and other online job opportunities. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, in order to attain the above commitment, the county government will require to address current governance, transparency and accountability constraints within the county public sector. We must therefore ensure that we have a motivated and productive county public service. Among other public sector reform initiatives, I wish to briefly enumerate a number of cross-cutting issues that will assure expected results in delivery of public good. Develop and implement human resource management policy focusing on planning, recruitment, placement, deployment, and career progression. Performance management through a reward sanction-based performance contracting and performance appraisal systems. Devolve county government services to sub-county, ward, and village level where possible in line with the objects of devolution. Continuous in-service employee training based on needs assessment. Establishing and implementing service charters at all service delivery points. Completing the process of automation in revenue administration across all streams automating eligible county government services and provision of public Wi-Fi connectivity in selected public amenities to promote access to e-government services. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, as I conclude, I wish to acknowledge your distinguished role in the achievement of the county government mandate, as well as your commitments to the electorate through legislation, oversight, and representation. To accomplish the above tasks, we must promote prudency in utilization of county public finances. 
I have taken note of the limited scarce resources in the national transfers and own source revenues in meeting county development goals. I therefore expect to operationalize external resource mobilization departments and work with our development partners to help finance off-balance sheet initiatives. To achieve the above, I shall be initiating several policy and legislative proposals for your consideration and approval. Among other, the county treasury shall be forwarding the first supplementary budget proposal uh, financial year 2022-2023 to this house in order to align my administration priorities with the county budget appropriation. In due course, the county executive will forward the finance bill to address current constraints in mobilization of local revenues. I also look forward to the finalization of the third county integrated development plan, the CIDP 2023-2027, to further align our agenda for Nakuru with the county government development planning process. The CIDP will also be submitted to the House for your consideration and adoption. In my short stint since my inauguration, I have had meetings with all county government entities and received important briefs on current status of the county government. I have made necessary decisions to allow for seamless transition and to facilitate continuity of government services. In order to further assure a smooth transition, I reiterate my pledge to the completion of ongoing county projects. In addition, I wish to confirm the county government commitment in meeting its current financial obligations that may include but not limited to clearance of eligible pending bills and honoring of formally entered contracts with suppliers and contractors. That is the LPOs and the LSOs. In the coming days, I will be announcing nominees of the county executive to facilitate supervision, administration, and delivery of county government services. I urge, I urge you, honorable members, to expeditiously discharge your function in reviewing and approving the nominees. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, may I end by appealing to all of us to join hands to do that which is good and right for Nakuru County. Thank you for listening. May God bless you and God bless you. Thank you.